Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Stokes. <laughs> He's actually stolen many of my, my lines there. Um, I, I, I really would, would say um, we had many conversations about how uh, we, we managed to engineer that, that bid. And um, really, without Pete's perseverance, it never, it never really would have happened. Um, I suppose it also shows how long product development can take and um, uh, why, um, and you, you'll be hearing from Sarah Green from Newcastle later, why she is facing such challenges. Um, that it's taken six years to get to the outcome that we both believed um, uh, would happen, and really to start feeling the benefits will probably be a little bit longer. Um, right, that wasn't what I came to talk about, um, but before I, I do um, start talking about the DMO review and, and other things, um, I just wanted to say, um, personally, whenever I come to this part of the world, it always feels a bit like I'm coming home, um, my father was born in Great Yarmouth. I don't know where Acer is, but my father was born in Great Yarmouth. Um, he went to school in Norwich, and my grandparents had a bed and breakfast in Hunstanton. And I can tell you what wash day on a Tuesday in a 13-bedroom bed and breakfast is like, because that used to be my summer holidays. Um, but less of that. Uh, so... Thank you very much for inviting me uh, uh, to be here today. Um, it, it is a great pleasure to be in the east of England and at this fantastic research establishment. Um, before I go any further, I would also like to introduce Lady, Lady Victoria Borwick, um, who is attending the conference today. Victoria is our recently appointed chair of the Visit England Advisory Board. So I was going to say stand up and give everyone a wave, Victoria, but, um, and I'm very pleased that she's been able to be with me and you today. Um, I was asked actually also to talk a little bit about the prospects for the visitor economy and some of our priority areas of work and how we're progressing. So let's just remember how important our industry is. Um, tourism is a major industry in the UK, um, usually um, pre-pandemic worth £127 billion a year, which is around 9% of GDP. It was the UK's third largest service export and accounted for almost a third of all hotel investment in Europe. Um, Prior to the pandemic, British residents took 99.1 million overnight trips in England, tot totaling 290 million bed nights away from home. This is huge business. Um, you know, we know how important our industry is, but this is huge business. Um, so, how are we going to get back to that level? How are we going to get to improving on that level? Um, we're optimistic that British tourism is having a strong year. In fact, um, we have updated and slightly increased our forecast for the year in July, um, once we'd had official uh, inbound figures released. So looking at the number of visits to the UK, our latest forecast says that we can expect 37.5 million visits which is 92% of the 40.9 million that we received in 2019. If we actually look at that as far as money is concerned, the overall forecast is for spending by international visitors of 30.9 billion pounds, so up 9% on the 28.4 billion that was spent in 2019. Quite interesting, there's therefore an 18% gap, and I wonder what inflation has to do with that, but there you go. Um, uh, look, our priority is to rebuild international visitor value. Tourism uh, is an extremely competitive global industry. We want to make sure that visitors choose England, choose Britain for their next trip, staying longer and exploring further. But we're not operating in a vacuum. And unfortunately, at the moment, there are a number of external factors um, that are affecting people's decisions to travel. 
um, and, and believe me, these are all quite miserable, but cost of living, pressures on finances means that leisure travel um, can be deprioritised. Um, businesses in the sector are facing um, increased costs, which does mean that we can, if we're not careful, become uncompetitive. Visitor documentation. Um, we're competing against the Schengen visa area, um, uh, which is 30% cheaper for access to 27 countries. So, you know, not, not as competitive in that visa space as we might like. Um, experience at the border. Um, and I mean particularly when we see the likes of last summer where there were delays at the border and flight cancellations, and, and they can have a negative impact on perceptions. Um, also, regional spread. Uh, in 2019, London received more than £15.7 billion of inbound visitor spend, in comparison to £9 billion for the rest of England and £2.5 billion uh, and 515 million in Scotland and Wales. So you can see um, the, uh, the strength of that fantastic London brand, which of course is great news, but you can see that there is a challenge there about how do um, we make sure that people recognise there is more to England and more to Britain than just London. Um, it's not all bad news. The US, I'll give three cheers for the US. The U US is driving our recovery. Um, there are new air routes to the UK from uh, American Airlines, British Airways, United, Virgin Atlantic. They are all increasing their capacity between the two nations. And flight bookings from North America uh, were up 2% on 2019 um, in the week commencing the 21st of August. Um, we, of course, are trying to exploit that, as um, Peter's mentioned just last month. We had a three-day international travel trade event, Destination Britain, North America. Um, and we took 70 British suppliers from hotels, attractions, DMCs, DMOs. And they had, my God, they were busy, Pete. They had over 2,500 one-to-one appointments. Um, and they met top travel trade buyers, the press. And it's all about business. They were securing business and promoting the whole of Britain. I'm really thrilled that you guys were there. And uh, I think on the back of um, the uh, impending airing, there's a real opportunity for you in the United States. Um, so, in our role as Visit England, how are we supporting the tourism industry and landscape? Well, we're doing many things, of course, but one of the key strands of activity is supporting change, a real program of change in the delivery of regional English tourism. Um, creating a strong and resilient industry was a driving factor behind the Government Commission's review of DMOs, which was carried out by Nick Dubois. Now, I know Nick talked to you last year, and he will have talked to you about that review. But just to quickly um, remind you some of the, the thinking there, great destinations are great places to live. They're also great places to work, as well as great places to visit. Strong governance can drive place shaping. It can shift local and wider perceptions of a place, and it can contribute to local pride. Great run destinations can also attract new investment, increase income, and importantly, create new jobs. The, the review recommended an accreditation process to create a portfolio of DMOs and minimise the existing fragmentation. All other non-accredited DMOs would have no direct relationship with VB and VE, but with government, but would have a relationship with their accredited body. Um, Visit England would be responsible for this new tiered structure and in its response, government said that these accredited DMOs would be called Local Visitor Economy Partnerships, or LVEPs. It's catchy, isn't it? Um, uh, there is a movement saying that people prefer visitor economy partnerships because VEPs sounds like VIPs, and we do believe that you are our VIPs. 
Um, so, we have, during this last year, been implementing the government's response to the Bar Review. And I'm pleased to say that the programme is well underway and that we are creating that portfolio of nationally supported, strategic, high-performing um, visitor economy partnerships. I'm, I'm also really pleased to say that this has been welcomed and embraced. The enthusiasm, um, when you think about a change programme of this nature, the enthusiasm that we've had from destinations and DMOs has been phenomenal. Um, so, whereas we were trying to have a relationship with somewhere between 150 and two DMOs, we are moving towards a much more strategic and deeper relationship with more like 40. Um, we're also uh, implementing destination development partnership pilots. And I'm not going to say too much about those because um, otherwise um, Sarah will beat me up for stealing her thunder. Um, this is one of my favourite slides, this is. Um, well, it certainly is as more of it becomes coloured. So I'm very pleased to say that we have already awarded um, 22 LVEPs. And what, what's absolutely wonderful is that several of these are partnerships where a number of DMOs have come together to make their application um, and they've recognised that having one plan, having uh, you know, one approach at a larger scale is really beneficial. We have another awards panel next week and then again in January. So this map is changing constantly um, and uh, I think we are well on target to deliver by the end of the financial year um, approaching the full LVEP coverage. Um, another element of the Dubois Review tiered model is the, the creation of clusters of LVEPs to form destination development partnerships. Um, there are, well, there's definitely one, but we believe there are two pilots led by Newcastle Gateshead Initiative and a second in West Midlands um, funded through their um, Commonwealth Games legacy fund, which was returned to the Midlands. Um, these are very, very exciting arrangements with the potential to really create a significant impact on their visitor economies. Uh, they, they do this by collaboration at a strategic level, um, and they can collaborate on things such as skills, business events, connectivity, travel trade, etc. And as I've said, Sarah's increasingly getting nervous about how much more I'm going to say about this. I think this is one of the most exciting things. If we can make a success of destination development partnerships and have an opportunity to prove to Treasury um, that investment in regional tourism delivery is a good investment, it could radically change our, um, our tourism infrastructure. So one thing I would say is <clears throat> we talk about the North East um, DDP. It's not the North East's DDP. It's everyone in our tourism industry's DDP because everyone has an interest in it succeeding. Um, so just quickly a little bit about the benefits of the new um, LVEP structure. Um, clearly, I've already mentioned that we're looking to reduce fragmentation um, and um, we're looking to create a group of stronger, high-performing LVEPs and that is well underway and we're already beginning to see the benefit of those LVEPs um, supporting each other and sharing best practice and indeed um, delivering on some of the funded um, elements of our work with them. The LVEPs will have a direct and deeper working relationship with VE and VB, and therefore directly through us to DCMS and to government. Um, the recognition of LVEPs as the, um, I suppose, go-to body for the visitor economy will mean that they become the key organisation for local stakeholders to work with. We will be channelling our existing activity such as participation in our marketing campaigns, as well as extra support on things like training, skills, staff training, developing commercial strategies, the sort of work that you heard Ross talk about this morning. 
we will be channeling that through those LVEPs when we have the full network up and running.